Good day, Mamira! I am Rachel Jun Imagulianes from BSA English 2B. For today's video, I am going to discuss the existing language programs and policies already implemented in the Philippines. So after reading the article written by Garcia and Wiley, and, af and right after writing an essay about it, I was tremendously amazed as to how U.S. context fairly similar to the Philippine context. And it's kind of a cool to know that these countries have a lot to share in common when it comes to discussing language matters. We can say that we Filipinos are not really far apart from the U.S. and to other countries. That's how Filipinos are truly amazing, flexible, adoptive, and proficient language user of English. Before we elaborate the language policy in the Philippines, language planning, again, is the development of policies or programs designed to direct or change language use. As through the establishment of an official language, the standardization or modernization of a language, or the development or alteration of a writing system. Looking forward, as I search on the existing language programs and policies already implemented in the Philippines, I found some important points I want to give a short background, and I would like to elaborate one policy to be expound at the last portion that I want to focus to the most. To commence, the 1987 Constitution defines Filipino as the country's national language. It also acknowledges that Filipino is evolving and that it shall be developed and enriched on the basis of other existing dialects and languages. The Constitution directs the government to take steps that will initiate and sustain the use of Filipino as the medium of official communication as a language of instruction in the educational system. Let's have the first language policy. First, the 1987 Constitution. Section 6 to 9, or Article 14, outlines the language policy in the country. Section 7 states that for the purposes of communication and instruction, Filipino and English are the official languages of the Philippines. Section 9 mandates that the foundation of a national language commission tasked to undertake coordinate and promote researchers for the propagation and preservation of Filipino in other languages. Let's proceed to the second language policy, the Executive Order 335. This order assigns personnel in every office who will be in charge of all communication and correspondence written in Filipino. Third language policy is the KWF Resolution 1293. It was passed in 1992. It describes Filipino as a native language spoken and written in the national capital region and other urban centers in the Philippines and language communication between ethnic groups. Due to the outnumber of Tagalog users with debates dating as far back as 1937 when Tagalog was declared the basis of a national language. Number four, Department of Education, Culture, and Sports, or DEX, Order 81. In 1987, the DEX released the alphabet in a guide for spelling in the Filipino language, laying down the letters of Filipino alphabet and rules on spelling. According to the order, Filipino is composed of 28 letters, the original 26 letters of the English alphabet plus letters NY and NJ. The fifth language planning in the Philippines is the bilingual language policy. It seeks to attain Filipino and English competence at the national level through their use as a media of instruction at all levels. The sixth is the College General Education Curriculum's Language Policy. The GEC requires higher education institutions to have at least nine units of Filipino language courses in coordination with DepEd's bilingual education policy, whether Filipino should be taught. And the last policy I have said earlier that I want to focus to the most is the K-12 program and the mother tongue-based multilingual education or MTBMLE. DepEd launched this in 2011, the K-12 program, which became law only in 2013. These suit to build proficiency through language via MTB MLE introduced in 2012. The mother tongue or first language refers to languages or dialects first learned by a child in which the child identifies with. So, is there some issues and challenges upon implementation of this policy? Yes, definitely. It has been a debatable topic before and up until now, there are still some challenges faced by the language users. This is from my personal observation and experience. As a student growing together with the teachers in one home, I observe personally the problems they have encountered about the said policy, especially tung una pa siya apply and impose. The absence of book written in mother tongue, lack of vocabulary, and lack of teacher training are one of the dilemmas experienced by them. Even if they are teachers, they have negative thought about it. How much more with the students? 
My personal struggle about it is every time my siblings have an assignment and they ask help about the terms of some words like grabe jud siya kalaglo mo niya di ko halos makasabot. Unsa na lang pod kaha kung mahu dili pod ka sabot. So, the other intervention to know the word is to search online which sometimes a struggle for learners in the learning process since there are a lot of difficult vocabularies encountered which in return usahay sa putunta. Also, with the K-12 program, upon its implementation, a lot of Filipino people did not support about it as it adds burden to the another years of spending time with education. But on the other hand, as we noticed, K-12 program and MTB MLB are still existing today and we have seen a lot of progress making learning more influential. Amidst its issues and challenges, there are researches conducted making possible solutions to solve the problem. Above all the policy, it is still highly beneficial and a lot of researchers can evidently prove that. The seven policies I have presented are the existing language programs and policies already implemented in the Philippines, which I believe all of us encountered. And it is tremendously has a specific purpose that is why it has been imposed. The officials of the government have the power to employ this one that we Filipinos should observe, follow, and support as long as it is beneficial to all humanity. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much, Mamira. God bless you po and keep safe always.